On this, the April 29th, 2023 edition of What's Going On With Shipping, both the U.S. and Iran have seized tankers. Hi, I'm your host, Sal Mercagliano. Welcome to this episode. So for those of you unfamiliar with this channel, this channel started two years ago with the grounding of the Ever Given in the Suez and has since expanded to basically feature and discuss what's going on with global shipping. And the big one right now is the fact that Iran recently seized a tanker coming out of the Gulf of Oman, the Advantage Suite, and hauled it into Bandar Abbas. They say it was a result of a collision between that tanker and an Iranian vessel. Well, new information has come out that this is a follow-on or a tit-for-tat kind of seizure because the U.S. has seized another Marshall Island tanker, this one carrying Iranian oil. This type of action has been going on since 2020. So we're going to take a look at the news, see what's out there, what we know about these two vessels, and a look at the history of these operations and why they exist. If you're new to the channel, hey, take a moment, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell, so you'll be alerted about new videos as they come out. All right, let's go ahead and jump into this story. So here's the latest story over on G Captain. G Captain is a maritime news site, really great for encapsulating news. Uh, this is from a Reuters story. Iran seizes the Chevron charted tanker Advantage Suite in the Gulf of Oman. This was in yesterday's story that I'll have linked above here. So this vessel, which is carrying Kuwaiti oil, which is owned by Chevron, was en route to Texas to be blended with other oil so it can be refined in American refineries was seized by the Iranian Navy. Uh, the ship has its Marshall Island flag, which means it's an open registry. It is managed by a Turkish company. It is owned by a Chinese bank and has an Indian crew on board. And if that's not confusing, that is the world of international shipping. It's great. The follow-up story is this one today, also by Reuters at G Captain. U.S. confiscation of Iranian oil cargo preceded Advantage Suite tanker seizure. So we had suspected that the Iranian state uh, may not have been giving the a, a direct answer. Uh, it has been clear that at times Iran has not always given the clearest dissemination of information, but then again, neither has the United States. So we figured there was something behind the surface, but we just hadn't seen it yet. Now we do know. So this image here is of the Iranian Navy using a old, and I mean old, U.S. Navy CH-3 seeking helicopter to fast rope their personnel onto the deck of the Advantage suite. So what we know from basically sources is that this looks like a basic clear tit-for-tat operation. So the Marshall Island tanker, the Suez Rajan, was sailing from Malaysia. It was heading around the southern tip of South America when basically it went off track on April 22nd. The manager of that vessel, which is Empire Navigation, which I'll show you, has not commented at all. Now, when the U.S. Navy will quote-unquote seize vessels, they don't board them the way you see right here with the Iranians. Instead, what they'll do is leverage the companies to force a diversion off track. Now, what is clear is this ship has gone dark off its AIS. It's no longer broadcasting. And now we're not exactly sure where it is. We saw this same thing happen a few times. So last year, there was an effort to confiscate cargo off an Iranian tanker in Greece, uh, in Greek waters. Uh, the ship was grabbed. It was pu pulled in the Greek waters. The Iranians, in turn, grabbed two Greek tankers. And what we saw was an escalation of the event. We also saw that back in 2020, four tankers were forced to divert by the U.S. and because of sanctions that were against Iran at the time. So here are those new sources that you can take a look at that will cover that. So this is back uh, last year. This is uh, back in 2021, where we saw, excuse me, 2022, back in May 26 of 2022, where the U.S. seized uh, the oil of a tanker. In turn, Iran immediately seized those two Greek tankers. Now, I've been covering this for a long time. If you're new to this channel, I've been covered a lot about this because, again, I look at that intersection between commercial and military shipping at times. So, for example, we talked about the Iran uh, fitting out a new drone carrier. We've talked about Iran seizing oil tankers before. Again, not new. Uh, we talked about the U.S. seizing uh, Iranian tankers. Again, some people say, you know, I, I try to be as balanced as I can. I am not doing politics here on this channel, trying to give you what's going on with shipping. And then we've seen attacks on shipping here throughout this period of time. 
So all this goes back to just a few months ago, March of 2023, where uh, the Secretary of State, Anthony Blinken, posted this, designating Iran sanctions invaders. So specifically what they did here is the U.S. says it's committed to significantly reducing Iranian energy exports. Remember, this is not a U.N. sanction. This is a United States sanction. Today, the the Department of State is designating six entities that have engaged in the transport and sale of uh, Iranian petroleum products or petrochemical products. So they list a series of companies here. Golden Lotus Oil Company and uh, Real Estate Joint Stock Venture. This is out of Vietnam. Uh, the par- uh, Also listed three other ones. This is the uh, PRC-based Global Marine, Shanghai, uh, Junin Run Shipping, U- UAE-based Swedish Management, Shiraz Petro- uh, Petrochemical Company, and the Bashir uh, Petrochemical Company. And then they ident- listed a series of vessels. None of them are the ones that got grabbed here. So the uh, Suez uh, Rajan is not on this list here, which I think is, is, is significant. So this is the Department of Justice statement from 2020 where they seized the original four tankers. And this was an interesting operation. There has not been a lot of follow-up on this operation, but what is clear is that they identified four ships and then using pressure against the companies, either leverage against the shipping companies, the flag of registry, or the insurance companies that insure the cargo or the vessel, they were able to get these ships to basically go to an anchorage somewhere and offload the cargo onto American leased tankers, not American tankers. These were actually American tank. These were tankers that were leased by the U.S. government and the oil was taken off. And so this operations have been going on and back and forth. And what you're seeing is the tankers, the shipping companies, and more importantly, the crews get caught in the middle of these operations. This is really a detriment and it causes instability in the tanker market. We already have massive instability in the tanker market because of the Russia-Ukraine war and the price caps being exerted against both Russian crude oil and Russian diesel fuel. And so we're seeing that being done right now. So the latest on the vessels, this is Advantage Suite. Uh, She is still showing based on her AIS. AIS is the automated information system. This is the transponder that ships have. The problem with these transponders is you can turn them off. And that's exactly what happened when the Advantage Suite was boarded as per that video you saw. The AIS went off. However, she has been captured where everybody expected her to be right off Bandar Abbas. Uh, She was photographed and documented in that location. So we know she's in Iranian waters. This is roughly the same spot where the Iranians had taken those two Greek tankers last year. Uh, This is the company that operates them, Advantage Tankers. Uh, Initially, uh, she was listed as Venik Tankers, a Norwegian firm, but she's been sold since then. So Advantage is a Turkish-based company that is doing this. So yeah, this is the international nature of shipping. You get a lot of players involved here. You have Chinese ownership, Indian crew, Turkish management company, uh, Marshall Island flag, all of these involved. There's also a question about the Marshall Island flag. I want to designate because both these ships are Marshall Island flagged. Uh, the United States has a compact with the Marshall Islands in terms of defense. We agreed to defend the Marshall Islands. However, in 2015, when the Iranians grabbed another vessel, a Maersk vessel that was a Marshall Island flag vessel, the Pentagon issued a statement very clearly st- stating that the United States and the United States Navy is under no obligations under the treaty to defend Marshall Island flag vessels. That defense pact only deals with the Marshall Islands itself, not with vessels registered in the Marshall Islands. So don't expect any sort of military operation here to free the vessel. That's not going to happen. It didn't happen last year. It didn't happen in 2015. Don't expect it to happen right now. This is the Suez Rajan. This is showing her, and I'm going to go ahead and pull up her position here so you can see it. Uh, She was tracking south of Africa at the time. So her last position was off the coast of Malaysia here. She was coming out of Malaysia, and now here she is east of Madagascar. That was her last position. And as I mentioned, since then she goes dark. Now, ships will lose tracking as they fall out of sight of land, because uh, unless you have the satellite version of tracking, it's hard to detect these vessels. But in this case, it's pretty clear the ship went dark. Uh, She is gone. So we don't know where that vessel went and what's happening with the cargo or the crew right now. 
And this is the ownership company. This is the company. Uh, it's a Greek firm, uh, Empire Navigation. Uh, that is the owners of this vessel and where she operates from. So anyway, a quick summation of what's going on with the tit for tat with tankers between the U.S. and Iran. Uh, will there be an escalation? It depends. It seems as if Iran responds every time the U.S. grabs a tanker or attempts to interdict their flow. This has been going on for a while now, and it goes across both administrations. It was in the Biden administration. It's going on. It was in the Trump administration. It was going on, and it was back in the Obama administration. This is going on. A lot of this has to do to try to get Iran back to the table to talk about nuclear weapons. It, it is it is a problem. We've seen attacks on tankers because of the flags of convenience like the Marshall Islands, Panama and Liberia, these ships are ripe targets because no one's coming to defend them. We saw it with piracy in the early 2000s. We're seeing it in the Persian Gulf, the Gulf of Oman, and worldwide right now. We we're just seeing this done. There doesn't seem to be a lot of protections out there for commercial shipping. Uh, there's an argument that if you want to protect your ships, then reflag them under countries that have navies that will defend them, the United States, for example. Uh, however, if you operate your ship in these open registries, you are at the whim of nearly anything that happens. And so those ships can be grabbed, cargo can be grabbed. And understand what this does is raise insurance rates. It raises costs, which translates to higher cost inflation for everyone in general. I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, take a moment, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell so you'll be alerted about new videos as they come out. Leave a comment. I'm always happy for comments. Those are nice and they're not, as long as they're pleasant comments. Don't, don't be, get foul. Uh, happy to have comments on there. I learn a lot from my subscribers and viewers. Uh, I am by no means the oracle of all shipping knowledge. Uh, I research it. I did shipping for a long time. I do this subject on a daily basis, so I know a lot about it, hence the reason for the channel. Leave a comment, share it across social media, give it a thumbs up, and if you can, support the page. How do you support the page? Well, you support the page by either hitting that super thanks button down below or heading on over to Patreon and becoming a monthly or yearly subscriber. Uh, I will see you in my next video unless I happen to be grabbed by the Iranians or the U.S. Until then, this is Sal, signing off.